if you surrender on the property, what you're telling the bank and, you know, the world at large is that this property is no longer mine. I'm not going to make payments on it. I'm going to give notice to the bank and it's all yours. But the funny thing about the bank is, is that, believe it or not, they have more than one or two foreclosures that they have to deal with. Oh, really now? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I never would have believe? thought. <laughs> that Here's is very really hard to believe. Here's what we have to remember. The banks, although they have oodles of money, it still costs a buck or two to effectuate a foreclosure. Mm-hmm. Yep. So in that respect, the bank, although they know the property is coming back to them, they are at their leisure, their discretion as to when they actually effectuate the foreclosure. So she wouldn't still be the owner then? Well, in if there were issues, if there were issues, uh-huh. you know, she'd always be able to rely on the fact that the bank received notice that they have relinquished their rights. And then in that respect, again, uh, the bank has duties as well. You well, know, they're going to have to pay insurances. They're going to have to pay taxes. Correct. Yeah, because what I've run into uh, in the past is that the bank generally has, has an attorney go in from the bank and, and uh, file a motion for relief to take that property out of the bankruptcy, and then they can proceed with a foreclosure or proceed with a short sale. Uh, so it's kind of surprising to me that the bank made no move and that the tenants that she thought were gone and she didn't know after she owned the house are probably still living there for free for two years. Oh my now, I gotta, I, Tom is hanging on with that answer. i got to break in. If you just tuned in, you're listening to Let's Go Shopping with Bev right here on KCAA 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind here in San Bernardino. And we're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of real estate and if you just tuned in you missed a whole lot but you can hit your computer tomorrow and and put us up on the computer you can hear the whole thing and we have barbara and daniel farmer insurance bob bishop from exit inland realtor we have thomas with us our legal assistant and mia's on the board okay so thomas come back with the answer now please well he's bob's right you know again uh, the larger financial institutions, and we all know who they are, they're more expeditious in, um, in generally uh, effectuating foreclosures because, you know, more than anything else, they just have a machine that allows them to, to do this process. Bob described a, a financial institution doing what's called a motion for relief from the automatic stay. The automatic stay is a fancy term for the protection that a uh, a, a person, a family is afforded through a bankruptcy. They, they get relief from it so that they can effectuate the retaking of the property and then they get it back on the market. Some smaller financial institutions, again, not in a hurry to spend the ten to fifteen thousand dollars that a foreclosure may take. You know, they allow for that property to, to stay dormant. If that's the case, boy, I tell you what, those tenants, those former owners. They are really pretty much at their discretion when they leave. They could stay there forever. The lights are on. The place is warm. Football mm-hmm. season's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that is right. Yes. No, and I've heard stories of that where I've lived in here for three years now and haven't made a payment, and I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And hopefully they are smart enough, the ones that got into that predicament, instead of blowing that money that they would pay the mortgage or the rent, they're, they're stashing it away <laughs> because, you know, that old saying. You know, really, seriously, when you think about it, what goes around comes around. And one of these days, they're going to be knocking on that door and saying, hey, you owe us a trillion dollars. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> be smart enough, people. Don't blow your money. Put it away. Forget about it. It doesn't exist. And when that guy comes and knocking on your door or that rain comes down on your head, you're going to be, you and your family are going to be able to take care of the situation and move on. And then, Bob, this one goes to you, since you're the real estate expert. If somebody has to go into bankruptcy and they are going to vacate the house, they're going to walk away from it. Now, is it or is it not true that if you do not deal with the bank and try to to work out some kind of an agreement, you just walk away, that is going to hurt you going down the line, isn't it? Well, you will have the bankruptcy on your credit report. Mm-hmm. And that's probably the the worst thing because that's going to affect, uh, if it's on your credit report, it can be on there for 8 to 10 years. Mm-hmm. And that means that that can be hanging over your head when you uh, apply for other credit 
when you apply for insurance. Yes. Uh, when you, uh, some, depending on the type of job, there are certain types of jobs that involve finances and things that the, the employers are allowed to pull credit reports on you. Yes. Uh, so there's many factors that can be, uh, that can happen to you if, uh, you get that bankruptcy. And so generally we recommend to our clients that it's better to negotiate with the bank, work out a short sale or a short payment on it where you, the bank accepts you to, allows you to sell the property for what it's worth today, not what you owe. Right. And as part of that, uh, they, uh, you, uh, you're going to have a, a short sale listed on your credit report. It'll show that the property was paid uh, satisfactorily, but, and that will impact you a lot less. Uh, and it's something that you can write a letter of explanation to, to an employer or to uh, another entity that's looking at your credit and say, hey, look, I, we got into a bad situation. We took responsible for it, responsibility for it. We worked out a deal with the bank. They got the property. It was sold, and we were free and clear. But a a foreclosure basically says, I don't care. Correct. And when that pops up on a credit report, it tells people, no matter who's looking at your credit report, that you're a person that just doesn't care about what happens to your future finances. Okay. Now, Thomas, here's where you come in real quick. If that happens, now we heard from Bobson being the realtor and the bankruptcy and stuff. If somebody's getting in that predicament, it would maybe, and if they really don't know what to do, it's kind of better to call you guys, isn't it? Well, you know, we would be able to turn to those guys and be able to give them options as to, you know, what the repercussions are in a foreclosure situation and perhaps maybe, you know, discuss with them ways by which that the the mortgage company can be dealt with. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Bob was right on the mark in dealing with short sales. Another thing that I like being able to tell people is offer them a deed in lieu of foreclosure. It's one of those transactions that allows you to avoid a foreclosure and it allows the bank to take back the property without the expense of the foreclosure. Mm-hmm. Um, you're generally surrendering on the property in the same way, but you're not going to get dinged with having a foreclosure on your credit report. Good. And, Thomas, real quick, because I'm looking at the clock and my board up, Mia just gave me the finger numbers. Uh, Could you pump out all your contact information that when somebody hears your voice and how intelligent you are and they want to call you? Sure. Um, Again, I work for Attorney Richard Awanzik. Mr. Awanzik has been here in the high desert for the better part of the last 25 years. Our office is located directly across the street from City Hall here in Victorville. You can reach us at uh, 760-245-7310. Mr. Wanzik deals with all matters of real estate. If I can toot his horn, he's probably one of the most respected uh, civil attorneys in town dealing real estate issues um, and, uh, and all matters of law. I think the only thing that we really don't deal with is immigration law. So mm-hmm. I apologize if you have needs in that area, but we might be able to refer you as well. Okay, one more time, your phone number. 760-245-7310. All right, very good. And still stay with us, okay? I right, will. Barbara, real quick, contact. Uh, my office number is 909-795-2230. Bob. And when is your show on? Ah, Risk 101 Radio with Barbie and Dan is on every Tuesday, 4 o'clock, on this same channel. Okay, Never now, miss it. Well, if Never that's miss not, it. Oh, hey, thank you. Hey, and, and Barb and Daniel, do the same thing to, to Bob. I know. We need to wrap back to him. Come on. Yeah, what, what day is your show? Well, I'm a, we have a talk show here on KCAA every Thursday afternoon, Real Estate Talk with Bob and Randy uh, from 3 until 4 p.m. Uh, every single week. So if you have any real estate questions or comments, please give us a call. You can reach me, 951-318-1952, 951-318-1952, Exit Inland Realty. All right. Yay. Thank you, everybody. Right. Barbara, thank you. Daniel, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Mia. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Thomas. And that was the good, the bad, and the ugly. And like I said, you need help. Call these guys. Yeah. And if you miss Hurry. this program, go to the computer tomorrow, <laughs> and you can hear it. This was the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we got the answers. We will see you next week, same time, same station. Be safe. Be happy. Ciao, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you, Thomas.
on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. This is NBC News Radio.